You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging, ever-educational, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Remind you a couple of things here at the top of the show. First off, if you do like what you hear, Throw some likes, some stars, some reviews, whatever your platform lets you do. It's available on just about every platform under the sun these days. So if you like what you hear, do keep throwing those ratings, those stars, those reviews. It does help the new people. And this show's been running for a long time. We have a lot of reviews. But you know what? The new stuff always weighs very heavily with the algorithms out there. If you like what you hear, and there's new people literally discovering these markets all the time, the numbers don't lie out there, listeners, at the end of the day. They need a place to turn, keep throwing some stars, some ratings, some reviews. It does help them discover the content. And then, of course, if you want to discover more content in your lives, and who can blame you? You want to go above and beyond the traditional network. Only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to get access to 200 plus exclusive shows just for you folks out there. A lot of sneak previews and early glimpses of stuff before it hits the network. Of course, live access to this and everything else we do. And two exclusive shows every week, including pro Q&As and options oddities coming up tomorrow. Also, awesome giveaways like our pro trading credit. Just awesome going out this morning as I was walking into the studio here. It looks like some cool stuff. So get your name in the hat. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go for all that fun. As we go around the horn and see who's joining us, for this Thursday edition of the show. First, let's go out 
to the quiet, the tranquil hamlet known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show for the Thursday edition, sir. Always excited to be here. Nobody out uncles the mic. I've been great since my 20s. I've been a great uncle since my 20s. Not many people can say that. <laughs> you got a lot of practice. Much more than me, sir. So I, I doff my cap to you in the uncle department as we keep on rolling out to the dark, the stormy, the gloomy, the oppressive. Who would live there? Shores of Maine. Only one person. It's the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. How are things on the shores of Maine? Uh, good. I, I, By the way, and I totally missed Amberson. <laughs> I just, I was way too busy. This oh, you blew him off? He told me you, you were blowing him off, and you guess you I'm did. Not, I'm not trying to. Oh, not trying to. Uh, <laughs> he deliberately uh, came to your neck of the woods, hoping to see you in the compound and the rock lobster. Just, just too, too big time for him. I just, I uh, like, I don't know. It, too many things. Too many kids run around. Less life is run around. It's like I got too many trades on. I just, I can't deal with it. <laughs> just do what everybody does. Come by, and knock on the window, say hi, and then leave. <laughs> like, sir, I can't come down from my tower right now. I have too many trades on to go make human contact. That's not possible. <laughs> for the Rock Lobster. As it is the Thursday edition, we are rolling out the SIBO hot seat. Our old friend, the Flowmaster, actually far across the pond, exploring the heart of Africa on safari for the next couple of weeks. So clearly he's out of reach. It'd be fun to have him beam in from the Jeep mid-safari to talk about some unusual activity and maybe some lion spotting. But alas, <laughs> he is gone. But nonetheless, we have joining us today for the first time in the old SIBO hot seat, Mr. Vince Chico, the director of North American Retail Derivatives coverage over there at SIBO. Vince, welcome to the Option Block. Hey, Mark. Thanks Thanks for having me. Yeah, like like you mentioned, uh, Henry is uh, away from his computer for, I think, the first time in... First time ever. Years of, yes, first time ever. Yeah, probably the first time ever. <laughs> um, but he, uh, yeah, he's going to be gone for a couple of weeks, so... Um, I'll just introduce myself. I my name is Vince Seco. I uh, I began my career as a market maker um, in, in single stock options on the Amex, ex- Amex exchange. Um, traded on and off floor for about ten years before joining a startup uh, analytics provider named Liveball. Uh, we got acquired by Sebo uh, in 2015. Can't believe it's been eight years now. Um, Continued running sales for that for several years, um, and then just decided last year to pivot over to to the retail side of the business. Just saw so much more volume um, coming from the retail side than we've seen in previous years. So just wanted to change, and uh, so I've been doing that, covering all our retail brokerage accounts for uh, for about the last year now. Yeah, hard to believe that it's been eight years that they bought LiveVol. Doesn't seem like it's been that long, but. <laughs> I know. Doesn't that long ago, Ron and Stefan and I were were chatting about this new startup they had called Live Vol. Man, how how things have evolved over the years out there as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And if you're looking for a little bit of green, and this really shouldn't come as any surprise, we were joking about this on the Monday show when we were talking about that June CPI number. I joked, what, are we going to hit 5,000 <laughs> in the S&P? Not quite there, listeners, but a nice rally post CPI number. CPI coming in refreshingly low for June, which is the number everyone wanted to see. You know, jobs market still interesting out there. Job, labor market's still strong, so that's still obviously an issue. But uh, intriguing stuff out there, the raw inflation data maybe finally coming to grips a little bit out there, which is, I think, refreshing for everyone. The market, of course, liking that. Uh, we were threatening the 4,500 level not too long ago. Did Yeah, we got just, just a tick over it. Actually, I think we just got exactly there. And then that was enough for the market. We're retreating a little bit now, but still up about half a percent, a little more than that right now out there. The Dow kind of unched up about a tenth of a percent. And the Nasdaq saying, hold my bear, kid. Let me show you how it's done. Up nearly one and a quarter percent today. So making up for a little bit of lost time earlier in the week. Of course, you have this big event getting dragged out of the market. You also have the markets rallying. So no surprise 
that our Val friends taking a bit of a siesta from the Monday show. Vix, when we came in to start the show, just a tick north of 13 half, about 1355, puts it down about one and three quarters points from where it was on Monday's show. So, man, they are, they are taking that juice right out of the market there, listeners. Vol of Vol, interestingly enough, unchanged. It's still at about a 97, so threatening that triple-digit level, still in the exact same level as it was from Monday. VXX, again, all these Vol ETPs, they're just squeezing the juice out of all of them out there. 23 and three quarters when we kicked off the show. Puts it down over two, about two and a half points from the Monday show. That's a lot of Vol to come out of. VXX just in a few sessions, but that's what we got here. Uh, UVXY, same deal, 17 and a quarter down, about almost three points, two and three quarters points from the Monday show. So, man, they are coming for all of this stuff. They're going to have to reverse split UVXY again pretty soon at this level. Uh, SVX, 29, a new all-time high, I'm pretty sure. I don't even need to look. I can just hear the the yells and the joy of our friend, Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vix, who, by the way, I did chat with him yesterday with all the tornadoes. Man, what terrible weather we're having in Chicago. The historic tornado cluster. I did reach out to our friend, the Mr. Dr. Vix. I know he likes to chase a storm or two. Thankfully, he wasn't chasing those. He was safely ensconced out in the suburbs out there. But he's happy. He's happy. He's laughing all the way to the bank. A new all-time high. Actually, 29.55 is what it hit earlier this morning at 29 when we kicked up the show. Still up about two and a half points. So that's Vix. People got excited when it hit 17. I know a lot of our listeners were overriding between 17 and 20. Here we are threatening 30. So I think I was laughing about some of those SVIX calls not too long ago. I guess I guess I need to maybe eat some crow on those. Uh, UVIX at a four even down about a point from Monday's show. Man, they're coming for all this. And VOLQ 17 and three quarters down about one and a half points. So moral of the story, listeners, VOL gone, done. Kick to the curb, <laughs> none left for the weekend. Let's go around the horn the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out to the SIBO hot seats first. Mr. Vince, sir, an intriguing week, a lot going on out there. What was catching your eye in the markets this week and today, sir? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's hard to kind of, uh, I think we'll cover a little bit later, but um, it's hard to take our eyes off off of Rivian and um, just, you know, just the fact that the stock has exploded over over the last couple of weeks, being up almost 100%. Um, so I've been taking a look at that, a couple of trades in there. Um, you know, some, you know, I think the index volumes today are relative in, in the last couple of days have been relatively in line with normal. Um, I think today we're, we're probably looking about 2.6 to 2.7 million contracts will probably trade if, uh, if we, kind of track to what we normally do um so not a heck of a lot going on right now but um you know certainly some interesting stuff in the single stock space yeah a lot to unpack out there as we keep on rolling around the horn let's go out to the dark and stormy not volatile shores though because as we discussed earlier all the vol is gone listen there's none left for the rock lobster to enjoy Uh, mr rock lobster what are you doing out there with, with no vol left what are you looking at out there in the market sir uh, with no vol left, well, I mean, there is, there is uh, still vol left in the futures. Um, nope, it's all gone. Vix is dead. It's done. It Put is all gone. <laughs> 2017 all over yeah. again, baby. You know what? When when you have this, you just kind of have to change strategy. So I'm back to looking at uh, actually for the first time today in a while, like uh, some put butterflies um, in the indexes. As far as the vol products go. You know, there's still a lot of potential decay in the pipeline. It's just you're kind of sitting there watching them decay here while VIX is at a recent low. I think this is probably the lowest level it's been um, in a week or two and kind of staying there. So, as you know, like vol from this point is takes a little uh, takes a little bit to come off. The second thing is like this news around the Q rebalancing. Were they going to sell some of the the big stuff and buy some of the other stuff? Um, I would think that would have given us um, a little reason uh, to see a little volatility in there. But, of course, probably everybody that was selling on that news. uh, And then you have this kind of what I would say, you know, better inflation news. But, of course, they, they changed all the inflation metrics four or five months ago. So they don't look back two years anymore. They only look back one. (laughs) <laughs> so they've they've neglected to say anything about that to the public at large, but we'll let that slide as usual. 
Um, so from a, a market point of view, we're at 4,500. VIX is at 13 and a half. And I think who was ever positioning against this Q rebalance is getting squeezed like a, you know, squeezed like a grapefruit today. So, but we'll see how, you know, how long that kind of squeezy rally lasts. But I mean, for the most part, um, you know, all of all products uh, like UVXY, VXX traded at all time lows today at some point. Uh, our new product, SVIX, I believe, traded at an all time high, traded above. Uh, I know that's Dr. VIX, is, that's his favorite, his current favorite product, I believe. Uh, trading at an yeah, all time high. You can probably hear his listed. shouts of joy all the way up on the shores of Maine as a hit, a yet another new all time high, sir. I know. <laughs> so. You know, these are, I mean, these are all definitely, I think the economy is doing, uh, everybody is expecting the worst. It's doing um, better than everybody thought. Um, Interest rates are higher and uh, the government's going to actually have to pay a pretty big interest ding this year. So I guess we'll worry about that six months from now. But as far as right now goes, AI is going to save the world, which would be great, by the way. We could use some saving. It's going to save (laughs) the world. Or kill us all. You see that creepy robot conference they had, uh, a fake AI UN a week or two ago. Pretty terrifying stuff. (laughs) The robot said we have to earn their trust. Yeah, all sorts of little ominous things. It does make you wonder when you watch these things, has no one who works on these things ever seen a sci-fi movie? Because that's pretty much much what they're all about for the last 50 years is AI killing us in some way, shape, or other. And yet uh, apparently they missed that note. In the AI developers conference. I, and I believe, you know what, scientists have missed other notes before in the past as well. Yes. <laughs> they develop this stuff like, oh, this nuclear stuff never going to have a use. <laughs> so, well. What's the old line from Jurassic Park? They were so excited that they could, they didn't stop to think if they should, right? No one yeah. listens to Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum spouting wisdom. All those years ago, nobody listening to him as we keep on rolling. You know, we all listen to Uncle Mike, though. He is our resident dispenser of wisdom here on the show. Uncle Mike, what do you think about killer robots? And what else is catching your eye out there in the market today, sir? Well, don't think too much about killer robots, I have to say. I haven't really spent a lot of time with them in my lifetime. Um, But in terms of like this market, this is killer something, that's for sure. Um, we are just continuing to go up. Now, one thing that we're not getting, we're not getting major um, 2% rallies in a day off of something that's unexpected, if you will. We're just going up. It's like, what's the good news going to be today is what it's been so far this week with uh, the in- both inflation numbers. Now, what's going to be interesting to see is are we going to continue this in terms of uh, the earnings that we have coming out? Because uh, earnings season is upon us. And so I think that what we're going to see is we could actually continue to go higher, of course, but we've had quite the jump. And then is this going to be a sell the news type of thing? So uh, although I'm bullish, I'm always bullish. Uh, I am leaning cautious right now just because we've had quite the run up over the course of the last couple months. And you're even more cautious about the killer robots. So don't forget that portion out there <laughs> as we keep on rolling. Let's see what's going on out there in ye old options market today. Let's start On the big dogs, let's fire up the old trade alert machine, see what kind of numbers it has for us today. First, out to the land of VIX. And you know what? VIX liking itself a little bit of the old action today. Any day where we're getting a decent decent movement out there in VIX is translating into a little bit of ye old paper. Over half a million contracts on the tape already, about 516,000 contracts on the tape today. So that's pretty robust. We've been hanging out at a quarter million or less most days this week, so... Decent jump. I mean, it's still not 1.2 million like we saw not too long ago, but still a respectable day, all things considered, especially when you see that the ADB continues to erode. It's down to about 736,000, puts it down about 20 odd thousand contracts from where it was on the Monday show. Spy, you can almost set your watch by it at this point. This time in the show, it's going to be around 4 million contracts. Right now, it's 4.1 million. So no surprises there. The ADB, 7.5 million. So Spy, doesn't matter what the day is. If it ends in Y, it could put up 4 million contracts by this point of the show. The S, 1.5 million. So decent paper out there. It's not quite 1.8 million or 2 million, but hey, it's not bad out there. Zero day bringing the thunder yet again today. The ADV, 2 and 3 quarters million out there right now. Small caps, the IWM variety listeners, 487,000 contracts on the tape. The ADV finally dipping below a million, 940. 
3,000 contracts. And uh, small caps up about three quarters of a percent. So looking pretty robust out there, sliding right between the S&P and the NASDAQ today in terms of the major indices, in terms of performance gainers to the upside out there. And then we got the Qs to almost 2.1 million contracts on the tape. The ADV, 3.1 million. So a decent day out there for the NASDAQ. They seem poised to hit their number again today. Speaking of hitting their numbers, let's see what's going on out there in the world of all things single names, listeners. And you know what? Earnings season is kind of upon us again. Everyone really waits for Friday, the official kickoff with the financials. But you know what? You don't have to wait to see those kinds of numbers in single names, listeners. It's a pretty robust day. 323 thousand contracts it's what it costs you to break into the top 10 today so that's that's a banger we haven't seen that in a while we've been around the 200 plus thousand range for a while so getting back over 300k it's good to see that gets us to nicola man we were just talking the flow master was talking on the shows a couple weeks ago about how much paper they were seeing in the upside in all these non-tesla ev makers all the cheapy ones quote unquote you know you have your rivians your lucids your, your nicolas all that fun and uh, Nicola coming in at number 10 today, 323,000 contracts. When you see the price action, you may understand that. It's up 43% today, or 60 cents, trading right around two bucks. It is pretty much at the high right now. Now, of course, going back to its 52 week high, it was about $9, so it's got a ways to go. And if we go out, if we max it out, how high do we get if we max it out? Looks like it got up to about $67, pretty close to it. So obviously a long way to go on the upside, but still. Pretty banger day out there for Nickel. I'm going to guess. I haven't looked at the numbers list. I'm going to guess it's a whole bunch of calls <laughs> going up out there. Let's see. Let's see if I am correct today, listeners. And yes, 47,000 of the July expiring tomorrow. Two calls have traded already today, followed by 39,000 of the July expiring next week. Two calls. So a lot of those hanging on the precipice right now. Oh, we just ticked two bucks. So there we go. Those are now officially at the money calls. Will they work out by tomorrow? I guess that's what everyone's betting on. Listen, are you are you rolling the dice? Are you rolling them bones out there in Nicola? I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know out there. Number nine, getting, I won't say stayed, but it's a name we've seen quite a bit. It's one of our chip zone names. It's AMD, 359,000 contracts, up about 31 cents today, trading a little bit shy of 115. That's a pretty quiet day for AMD, all things considered out there. It looks like on the range and a little bit more impressive if you look at the full range of the day. Got down to about 113.60 and as high as 115.80. So that's not bad. About 220 on the range out there. We're right now kind of hanging out a little bit north of Unch, but good for 359,000 contracts and the number nine spot. Number eight, back to cheap EVs, even though less cheap than it has been, as Vince alluded to. This name has, has seen some love over the past couple of weeks. Pretty much doubling. Yeah, over the last month, it is up 69% over the past month, or about 10 and a half handles. Actually managing to sell off a little bit today, off about a dime. Nothing big, listeners. It traded nearly 27 bucks earlier this morning. Now it's trading 25 about 85 or so. Uh, this is, of course, Rivian. Good for 391,000 contracts. This one just kind of been on fire. Of course, this was a big player in the meme stock days. Its success early on is one of the reasons Ford got so meme heavy. Everyone was piling in. We were talking about Ford 25 and 30 calls. It sounds crazy now. And it kind of did then. We were saying it back then. But people were piling into all this upside in Ford. A lot of it driven by their stake in Rivian. They have, of course, since unloaded that. Uh, maybe they wish they had some more today. But uh, intriguing stuff out there in Rivian. Good for number eight. 391,000 contracts. Number seven. Talk about the turnaround name. Uh, of the last year. This is Meta, nearly half a million contracts, 477,000. Up another five, but almost five and a half handles today, trading 314 and about two thirds out there. So a nice little pop for Meta after everyone's worried about rebalancing and dumping them. Now here they are buying them up again today. As uh, the Rock Lobster was saying, folks who are playing on that rebalance getting squeezed a little bit today. Number six, going out to Crypto Land. Ooh, my goodness, this is just a day of just bangers. A Coinbase, 480,000 contracts on the tape, up nearly $9. Actually, just ticked $9 exactly, up 10.5%, trading a little bit shy of 95 bucks, 94 94 right now, listeners. My goodness, what a run for this one. This one, of course, not too long ago, 
coming under the ire of the SEC. They got down to about 50 and a half bucks. Of course, you go back all the way on the year, their low is 31 and a half bucks. That was back in December of last year. So pretty much 3x from that low and not quite doubling, but pretty darn close from their low just exactly a month ago when the SEC came after them. A lot of this coming on the heels of some rumors that maybe these Bitcoin ETFs are going to be approved. Coinbase was downgraded. Doesn't matter. (laughs) Doesn't matter. More buyers and sellers today, listeners. Uh, Strong pop out there in Coinbase today. Uncle Mike's favorite name out there. I think he also owns CoinbaseReallySucks.com as well. Uh, Number five. Yes, number five, listeners. When was the last time we said that? It's the fruit company. It's Apple. 190.65, up nearly 90 cents, about half a percent. So about four bucks shy of its all-time high, but still looking pretty robust. (laughs) <laughs> headlines out of fortune is now the worst time ever to buy Apple stock. <laughs> All sorts of good stuff. And again, kind of light volume, only 487,000 contracts on the tape. Number four, it's ye old alphabet, AKA Google 124 and a quarter up about five and a half bucks. So again, everyone, I guess undoing the unwinding they did earlier this week ahead of this rebalancing. Cause all these names are now popping hard again. Just a robust day for them. Good for 522,000 contracts out there. Number three, this name should come as no surprise. It's pretty much the tip of the spear of the AI vanguard out there. It is NVIDIA. 450 and three quarters, up 11 and three quarters. So, yeah, this is exactly what we're just talking about. This, the whole fade heading into the, <laughs> heading into the Q's rebalance is completely being undone. It's, it's fascinating to watch out here, listeners. Good for 738,000 contracts. Number two, the Amazonians looking pretty robust today, 816,000, up three and a half bucks or 2.7%. Maybe uh, Prime Day was looking pretty good for them. Either way, getting a nice little lift out there today. Oh, yeah, here's the headline. Biggest Prime Day in the company's history. What that means, they set a single day sales record as well. So I guess it looked pretty good. You buy some stuff. I actually loaded up on a bunch of gear for the studio. So there are worse things. (laughs) And then, of course, number one, you know what it is, listeners. It's Tesla. 1.1 1.1 million contracts on the tape today, 274 and three quarters, up about two and three quarters on the day. And again, 1.1 million contracts. It's kind of about average paper for what's cooking out there. Speaking of what's cooking, we're still kind of waiting for the next phase of earnings season to kick in. So we don't have our updated earnings season reports and everything else yet uh, from our friends over there at ORAS. They'll probably kick in with tomorrow's numbers. With uh, all the stuff popping off, we have, of course, uh, City tomorrow. We have uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, a lot of the big names a lot of folks are looking for, even though you'd have Delta before the Open today. So you got a few names. We are starting to get back in it again. So if you like to sink your teeth into some clear and precise micro stuff as opposed to all this macro nonsense sometimes, then, hey, we got you covered. On the dates and on the earnings reports and all that other fun, so look forward to new reports coming at you. Really soon. Speaking of coming at you, listeners, it's time to unleash the eye of Sauron. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. everybody let's do it let's unleash the eye of sauron and see what the heck it is fixing its gaze on and one of them i think is pretty obvious we just talked about it vince alluded to it earlier in the show it is this just insane run we're seeing out there in rivian again it looks like they have shifted they are now up about a dime on the day so wait two seconds if you don't like what you're seeing out there in rivian land of course, over the last month, like we said, up nearly uh, now it's up 70 percent, nearly 71 uh, percent, nearly 11 handles. Uh, this name kind of languishing at about 13 bucks not too long ago, uh, 26 right now. So, man, just uh, just quite a run, pretty much doubling out there. So impressive. If you go all the way back a month, it was at 15 and a quarter. So technically only up 71 percent now on the month, but pretty much doubling from the last few weeks out there. So crazy town out there. Uh, Mr. Vince, I know when you're not talking to us. You guys have been watching all the madness unfolding 
out there in Rivian, sir. What's catching your eye out there these days? Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, what's particularly interesting, I, there's not a ton of unusual trading today, but what we're seeing, um, you know, obviously the skew persists at extremely inverted levels, uh, which, 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 you know, which you could argue is obviously justified with the stock being up as, as high as it is. But looking out next month, um, about 30 days, if you look about equidistant, um, you know, in the call on the put, calls are trading about two times what puts are trading. Um, so, I, I mean, it's definitely pretty extreme. Um, you know, again, when stocks run up 100% in a matter of weeks, that they can tend to happen. Um, Vol's elevated at 95-ish or 93-ish. It can take them a little bit today. Um, but again, you know, it's hard to argue that's not justified levels. It's just... Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, we're sort of seeing this divergence between the, you know, index vol, which is the skew, is at somewhat normal levels um, versus some of these single stocks where it's just inverted um, based on these stock rips to where call volatility is just much more expensive than, than put. So, um, so that's what we've been looking at on that side. And when Henry's on, he's usually talking about his baby, which is, of course, the Trade Alert platform, which obviously he knows best because he created it. Uh, but I know you're using a lot of different platforms over there, including your old stomping grounds, which is Live Vol. Is that where you're getting a lot of this skew data and vol data from, Vince? Yeah, I kind of flip between between Trade Alert and Live Vol. I think Live Vol, I, I think it, it, we've got some pretty good skew visualization tools um, for where we stand now versus historically. Um, you know, Trade Alert there's nothing like it as far as looking at order flow. So, um, yeah, I mean, they, they slightly different use cases, but definitely, um, can both do a lot of different things in the analytics space. Yeah. I've always liked the skew charts and the skew graphs. That's what first drew me uh, to live. Vol. That's kind of their selling point way back in the day. They're like, Hey, this is how market makers like to look at things. And that's what we're putting in our platform. And it's what I've I used ever since. And then Henry came along with all of his fun flow data. And here we are, here we are all these years later, just to analyzing flow left, right, and center. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I have to imagine one or two of your crazies over there in the land of the pit have been drawn to this Rivian thing. Anything catching your eye out there, sir? Um, I mean, just that we I saw a paper in there last week. I even think we talked about it last week. Um, and I was going to put it into one of my products just to buy a quickie strangle in it because it looked the options look cheap. And then it, and then it like doubled in price. I, I, I didn't get the trade off. I didn't have time. Um, it feels like it's kind of topping out a little bit here. Um, after you know it doubled, and I, and I think we were surprised. Like you could have picked us off the floor. Like they actually delivered units, vehicles, like eight thousand vehicles. I, I was I was floored. So um, I think the fact that it's actually delivering vehicles caught people by surprise, and um, and. You know, you kind of have the 2020, 2021 squeeze-a-rama on the shorts. So um, I haven't noticed any new paper, and it's already covered uh, a bit of the upside skew where they're coming for, uh, you know, the, the liquidity providers. They're not, they're not shy anymore. They're just going to jack all that upside up. Um, but you're looking at July, you know, and I think um, – I would say like the vol is reasonably priced. The twenty six and a half straddles like uh, almost what uh, just under three dollars, probably fair for next week. Um, but you're still getting volume all the way up. So one of the symptoms of that squeeze, you know, in twenty twenty one was there used to be call volume in every single strike in every single term, um, and when you look at these. You know, even the August, every cycle, man, they're just like 10, 8, 3, 4, all the way up every single strike. So, uh, so that clearly the retail has jumped in and they think, you know, and everybody thinks it's going to be squeezed a little higher. Um, uh, sure, it could. It was like a hundred and something dollar stock, uh, you know, two years ago and it got down to what, five or six bucks. So at this point, I think the first kind of squeeze is over. My 
personally, I just would let it cool. I haven't done much with it. I haven't done anything with it actually after missing the trades that we saw last week. So, um, but I would just say like that vol's inverted and they're trading every single call and every term all the way up. Um, so all the actions in out of the money calls, which of course means in my head, I would rather leverage buying puts and stock because all the put vol is much cheaper and then you just sell the calls into the, into any kind of a lift. Um, and kind of work it that way, but um, that's um, that's what I see in there. I'm nothing, nothing fantastic to report, sadly, though, right now. All right, as we speak about reporting, let's report on some other names. Everyone's got Rivian on the brain, but I know Vince, we're not looking at crazy EV manufacturers. You got a few other names on your radar, including a lot of indexes over there. What's catching your eye out there, and maybe uh, some index flow this week, sir? Yeah, maybe a little more tame than, than the Rivian side. Um, we're looking at the, a, a roll that went up in XSP today. Um, so it looks like somebody purchased back about 16,000 of the July um, 21st, 384 puts. Sold out August, um, 432 puts. Um, for and, and did the spread for about 221, I believe. So they sold out the 432 put, um, just again, closed out. I'm sorry. They closed out the, uh, the purchase of the. They bought back their 384 puts and sold to open uh, 432s, which are you know about eighteen dollars out of the money now. You know, vol's near the annual low, um, but you know, kind of the, the certainly. You know, you, you could argue again that it's justified. I mean, the the realized vol has been less than the implied, so it's. Uh, but um, notice that one today. So, and if people aren't familiar, XSP is the one tenth SPX, um, also cash settled. Um, all the characteristics of SPX, but just one tenth the size. I get to talk about XSP as much on the show, but you're right; it has all the benefits of the S, including the tax treatment and everything else. But same size as spies. So if you're more of a spy trader, listeners, you haven't dipped your toes into the S yet because it's too big, maybe a little scary for you. But you want some of those some of that tax treatment out there, then maybe uh, XSP, a place to go. Still kind of coming online in terms of volume and paper, but as Vince pointed out, getting a little bit more paper, a little bit more activity out there today, which is always good to see. We're here for more paper across all the products at the end of the day, listeners, including uh, some interesting newcomers to the show. Let's go out to the land of semiconductors in Taiwan. You might be thinking Taiwan semi and no. (laughs) <laughs> That's where you obviously would go. But no, we're going to United Microelectronics Corp. Ticker symbol UMC. Listen, this was originally, this is the first semiconductor company launched in Taiwan back in 1980. Uh, so this one has uh, the pride of place but being first. Of course, everyone talks about Taiwan Semi today. A little bit different price as well. Taiwan Semi at about 105 This one at $7.76. Kind of unched. On the day today, on the year, a little bit better. It was six sixty a year ago, and then they came for it. They drove it down to its low for the year of five dollars and thirty six cents. That came on October eleventh of of last year, and since then it's been pretty much all upside. They rallied it back up to nearly nine bucks. That was on looks like on March thirtieth or so. Then they sold off again to about seven and a half in April. Then they rallied it again to almost nine, eight ninety seven. That was on June fifteenth, so exactly a month ago. So I suppose since then, over the last month, it's actually they've actually sold off a bit, off about a buck or about twelve percent. But of course, if you look back net on the year, it's been mostly upside since October of last year. So a nice little run, a little bit of a give back over the last month, but for the most part, a pretty decent run. But you know what, Mister Rock Lobster, seems like. Somebody is deciding this recent sell-off uh, might have some teeth because uh, we got a bit of a put-palooza going up out here today. Uh, first off, we noticed 60,000 of the Dece 6 puts. So these are one and three-quarter out-of-the-money puts, listeners, uh, going up for a dime. Now, this was a funky market. They were a nickel bid at 15 cents, so these were crossed at a dime, exactly mid-market, exactly the stock right here. The stock hasn't budged since then. So you could maybe intuit that maybe someone got to sell some for a dime. I, I probably would be maybe, and it's not a great amount of premium, but if you're looking at what you're doing, are you buying the six puts? It did break the six handle not too long ago, so I suppose 
crazier things have happened. Then right after that, it looks like about 20 minutes later, someone came in and looks like they bought the market. Then, of course, widened out after that first print. It went nickel bid at 20. And that's when we saw 12,000 more trade for 15 cents. So those look like they probably bought those bad boys. The stock hadn't budged. It was still right around 775. So uh, intriguing stuff. This is about a 40 vol. If you are intrigued by these listings, what would you rather do on these puts lists? Would you rather sell them for a dime or maybe if you're if you can get them off 15 cents, that seems like a good level. Or would you rather buy these because you think yeah, a little bit of dark times, some storm clouds gathering on the horizon for UMC. If we're talking storm clouds, only one place we can go. The shores of Maine. It's always dark and stormy there. Mr. Rock Lobster, first off, how much do you love your new favorite semi name? Actually, the oldest name, UMC. I'm sure you're going to tell me you made markets in this in 1983. And then, B, <laughs> what do you think about these puts? What do you think they were up to, sir? You know, I, I think I did. <laughs> but I don't think it was called UMC back then. They, like, they pay a crazy dividend. You know what I think this is? Yeah, they pay this, like, annual dividend. Um, Mark and I looked at this. We thought they were buying these puts and buying stock on a 10 Delta. So I think it is – they already paid the divvy, so it can't, can't be a divvy trade anymore because um, it's in 626 projected dividend. Maybe they haven't paid it yet this year. Um, and it's going to come out in July. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, but it feels like it's some kind of dividend play. Um, and they're just using the puts cause I, that went up. It looked like it went up on like a 10 Delta. Um, so at first I thought, yeah, cause the, the stock prices were kind of higher. This has just funk written all over it. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Cause it's not <laughs> like this stock really takes off. I mean, oh, well, it was just eight bucks. Uh, now they're claiming they did pay the divvy. So interesting, like it's sitting down here. I don't know. I, I feel like they're looking for an explosion on the upside. But why they did the puts 10 to 1 is uh, maybe so they can collect more puts if it keeps going down or collect more stock, buy more stock against puts. I'm not quite sure. But uh, I, I think this was like a put in stock thing. And it, it did look a little oddball to me when we actually saw this go. Yeah, it's a head scratcher either way, which is why it's in the odd block listeners. You know, what you're doing it post divvy is less attractive. And also this funky ratio <laughs> with the stock kind of weird as well. Kind of head scratching here, listeners. Do you like these? Would you buy these? Would you buy these with stock? On roughly a 10 Delta? <laughs> I'm curious, listeners. Hit us up. Let us know. You folks are never shy of sharing your opinions out here as we keep on rolling out to our final victim for the day here. These are our old friends on the advisors. Option. Uh, this is Northern Trust, ticker symbol NTRS, trading at about 76 bucks right now, up about a buck and a third and only 2%. So a nice pop. For Northern Trust, trying to see if they had, uh, I mean, getting into financials, if they had earnings today or not. I don't see them on here, but intriguing stuff. On the year, though, different story. A year ago, they were trading right around 100 bucks, so rough year for them. Still off about 20% on the year. They actually rallied to about 104.5 in August. So that big rally we had in August, excuse me, of last year, they got up to about 104.5. Uh, then they came for it. They crushed it down to about 77 and three and a quarter. So right about where they are right now in October. Then they rallied it again, February and that early leg of the rally we had this year. So they rallied it back up to about a hundred bucks, 99 bucks. So they were back to pretty much unst on the year. And then they came for it again. They crushed it down to 69 and a half. That was the low for the year back in May. Uh, so interestingly enough, not in the contagion and they hit it in the contagion times. It went from 94 to 82 in March. But the real sell-off came in May, which is kind of interesting. And it's kind of been languishing here uh, pretty much ever since. So we're in the mid-70s. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found. Looks like Mr. Rock Lobster, somebody's going for a bit of a near-term pop. And you know what? I guess they got it today. Where, did they, where was the stock when they bought these? No, the stock was 75 and a third. So I guess they're, they're on their way, Mr. Rock Lobster. It looks like they bought 2,661 of the July 75s. They paid two and a quarter. They lifted the offer on these. It's a 45 vol when the stock was about 75 and a third, so about 60 cents below where it is right now. Worth noting, because those are pretty juicy, worth noting 
They do get earnings in that. Earnings are next Wednesday on the 19th. There we go. So that's why those are so rich. It doesn't explain why they're popping today because there's no earnings today. Uh, but intriguing stuff. Mr. Rock Lobster, somebody reaching for a little bit of the moon here in NTS, excuse me, NTRS over the next week, sir. What say you? Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know what? I think, again, all of these financial companies, just looking at how they sort of performed here, I think the market has been waiting to actually see some earnings out of them. Like uh, Northern Trust was $100 before all this, um, you know, the banks are all going to collapse, blah, blah, blah. And um, like at least $90. So I, I think th- I've seen a lot of paper this week just moving in that direction where they're looking for the banks to kind of come out of this uh, basically still a fairly low end of the year range, not the very bottom, but definitely – lower end of the region just try to squeeze it back up. So I don't think this is uh I don't think this is a bad trade. Um you said they're gonna carry this over earnings. So yeah, I mean I think they could get you basically buy these calls. You don't really have any decay penalty for the next, you know, couple of weeks next week. So they're looking for a shot and you know an earnings surprise. And I think this is going to set a fairly large tone here just going into next week, how all these banks perform. Um, Cause if we have pretty decent performance out of all these, we get, it could be a bit of a vol killer. I think, I mean, I know vol's already low, but it, it would take another, uh, it would take another leg out of the sort of the market falling apart thesis. If somehow banks report decent earnings, you know, it would indeed, as we keep on rolling, it's Thursday listeners time for you folks to join us a little bit of the old, Mail block. It's time to take your seat on the All Star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, let's get right down to it with our question of the week right now. Listeners, still going hot and heavy. You can make your voice heard at options is the place to go. Uh, we asked you back when VIX hit 12 back in 2017. Those were dark times, listeners. It kicked off a dark period for the options market. No one wants to relive that. But will we see a repeat this year with lower vol leading to lower volume in the second half of 2023? Gave you two answers. Yes, low VIX kills volume or no, zero DTE will save us all. <laughs> that last part, obviously a little bit tongue in cheek. If you just think no, you can obviously just vote no as well. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. You were on... The no tip on Monday, I do believe. Is that still the way you are leaning, sir? Why not? I'll stay on the no tip for sure. I I, I think that no is the key answer for right now. But it could change. But for now, I'm sticking with no. (laughs) Well, you got about a day for your answer to change. But I I know the real reason you're answering it, sir, is because you love all things zero day. You can't get enough. Can't get enough of the zero day phenomenon, sir. Zero DTE some stuff right now. (laughs) I'll give you a few minutes. Uh, to go sling some uh, straddles in zero day while I get everybody else's thoughts on our poll. Mr. Vince, same question for you. I know you guys have some skin in the zero day game over there at SIBO. Uh, what do you think? Second half of the year, is this lower VIX? Is that going to kill volume or are we going to see uh, zero DTE coming to the rescue, sir, and keeping volume strong? You know, what, what, what we've noticed, uh, you know, and, and certainly not going to project too much, but what I would say is, the zero DTE um, has been remarkably, remarkably consistent. I think we've averaged, you know, 1.1 to 1.3 million contracts per day each of the last 10 months. Um, so, and that, you know, and if you look at it, that's through different vol environments. So, you know, it, certainly I think there's a, there's a higher floor, certainly in terms of volume than, than we had had historically. I mean, back in 2021, I think we were trading 1.25 million contracts a day in SPX uh, on average. We're at about 2. Yeah, 2.9 in June. Um, that was our record month. And um, obviously, just zero DT alone is is comparable to what we were doing in the entire product back a few years back. So, um, you know, I won't prognosticate whether it's going to be higher or lower, but I will say that. Um, I think it's safe to say that it's going to be substantially higher than it was, you know, pre early 2022. Mr. Rock Lobster, you get the last word on this one. Yes. Is low VIX going to kill volume or no? Will zero DTE come to the rescue? (laughs) 
No, I don't. Th I don't think low VIX kills volume. Um, remember, options love a bull market. So uh, we will go to the. I, I guess we could ride to the zero DTE. We'll uh, save the day, uh, especially when I know the SIBO is going to list a uh, single uh, stock uh, zero DTE stuff once they make them cash settled again. That's that is an opinion. I'm not trying to put. So look at you breaking words or ideas into Vince's <laughs> ears, but that's a, that's my own. You know, mad speculation that there's no way they're going to leave these dollars on laying on the floor. Um, but SIBO has mostly done all the innovation for option products. So probably where it's going to come from. There you go. Rock um, Lobster breaking news here on the show today. I know. <laughs> this is like, no, no, no. And Vince confirms it. Anything yet. For all of his <laughs> compliance and product people, Vince confirms it. Yes, they will be coming <laughs> ne next week. Look for them on your so brokerage platform. I've been banging that drum for a while, though. Once, <laughs> once the uh, once these things ripped, because I think it's the cash settle that really uh, made it fly. Personally, um, anyway. So uh, no, I think uh, low vol people like a bull market. So even we still stocks still go up in a low vol bull market. Now let's see what you our people let's see what our people think, and they say yes, low vix is going to kill volume. Sixty eight point nine percent right now. And no, zero, D, zero DTE will save us all. 31.1%. Our audience does tend to lean a little bit to the dark side, and clearly they are doing so right now. Uh, Mr. Vince, uh, Henry is off touring the heart of Africa, so you get the honor of answering our question about a, a SIBO product this week. This one comes from Max C. You were just talking about SKU earlier and all the data you have at Live Vol there, Vince. And Max C wants to know, how is SKU looking with Vol at these low levels? Uh, the SIBO SKU index is at 138, so I'm guessing that means it's pretty low, but I'm not really sure what that number means. I just pulled it up while we were talking. This question came in, I believe, towards the end of last week. So SIBO SKU index has ticked up about 10 points since then, Maxi. It's at a 148 right now. But Vince, we're not talking to us. You're looking at a lot of SKU numbers out there, including the SKU index. What do you have to say for, for Max C, who wants to know well, this number, 138? Now 148. So what should he read into that? What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at the 25 delta um, skew. So basically, I look at the 25 versus the 25 normalized with the at the money. Um, that has ticked in a little bit, which just basically means um, that calls are relatively higher versus puts than they were <coughs> previous uh than they were i think uh we, we had a level of like four six on by that measure um a few weeks back um about six weeks back it's about 0 0.31 right now so it's basically calls um that th that measure um says that calls are if you look at the 25 delta around even um calls are a little bit um, more expensive versus puts than they were um, six weeks ago. So that's ticked in a little bit that way. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, absolute vol levels though, um, you know, and just disregarding skew, we just look at the, the VIX, obviously we're at, um, I want to look at the percentile right now for where we are. Yeah. We're in the 2% of the annual range. So um, certainly, <laughs> certainly low in absolute terms um but skew and, and the skew numbers we're talking about on, on the index are, are not anything extreme by any stretch or sort of well within normal normal range there you go max c thanks for writing in as we keep on going around the block it's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode it's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our Monday episode. Let's start in the Uncle Mike territory. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, we're all living that Uncle Mike bull life right now. You think we're going to still be talking about this on Monday? What are you keeping an eye on until our next show? Well, 4,500 is now the new barrier, at least for the time being. We had talked about 4,450 earlier in the week, but uh, 4,500 seems to be the number now. So watching that and watching any earnings that might be coming up, because not might be, they will be. <laughs> they will be indeed, including that special after hour session for Apple. Don't forget about that, Uncle Mike. I think it's on the weekend this time. So pay attention to that one. 
I, I know you love those special Apple sessions. And then uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, the same question for you. So what are you keeping an eye on until our Monday episode? Um, well, you know, so you have this news. You have the PMI. You got the CPI. You got this potential Q rebalancing, squeezy McSqueezenstein thing happening because I think a lot of people were shorting into it, like hearing about it. Okay, we're going to short. And then all of a sudden, they're getting squeezed out the wazoo on the upside because the inflation news was better. So you get like this, I don't know. It's like, I feel like we're going to have this weird blow off top before we sell off. Before like, let's say, you know, they, uh, the cues, because I'm looking, just looking more into this, Mark was finding it, I'm looking at all the news and whatever. So, you know, I never like it when you rally, rally smooth, but VIX doesn't really drop. Um, cause I'm sitting there in a pit and I'm trading this. I'm like, okay, I'm not, you're not really feeling like there's, there's willing sellers of all here. Um, which is usually what you need. I feel like when, you know, you're, you're going through the longer rallies and vol comes in cause you kind of have willing sellers juice. Um, and today it started that way this morning and not seeing it. So I, I, you know, I'm just going to say, I'm giving it a little pause here at 4,500. We hit the magic number SPX, but um, I'm going to, I'm I'm a little cautious um, and I'm actually quite anxious here after the show is over to get with my students here and look at some uh, sort of backspread style trades um, at the 30, 4,500 level, just because, um, I don't know, I think we're going to move. <laughs> I don't like... Uh, I don't like the non-signal from Vol, so that's kind of that's where my head is right now. All right, Mr. Vince, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until the next show for you guys on Thursday, sir? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all about the early earnings reports. I mean, there, there's a lot of single stocks with um, implied earnings moves of you know in the three to four percent range, um, which you know, I mean, again, that's. Uh, I think that's a, a little bit lower than what we've seen historically in terms of of where the implies are coming in. Um, I mean, we'll see if that persists. Um, you know, when we look again on Monday, um, if if anything resets, but um, definitely looking at a couple of the individual names: Tesla, um, you know, Netflix. You know, a lot of a lot of the you know big you know names that are heavily traded that are that are reporting late next week. All right, that music means we've come to the end of another fun sojourn through the world of options. If you want more content, stay tuned. We'll be back in about half an hour with Dan the Man Grams that'll break down all the action out there in the world of futures options. Before we go, let's go around the horn one last time. Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to check out what you guys have cooking, where should they go? What should they do? Yes, the good goodies, 888-TRADE-01, although don't call us the next two days because our customer care team is out, <laughs> so you can leave a message. Uh, or support at optionpit.com. And if you heard this show, you get 10% off. Also, if you want to learn to trade VIX or SPY, go to Money Map Press and check out my weekly profit cycles. Uh, well, heck, we're just closing more winning stuff today. So, um, and I did so early in the morning because, <laughs> like, oh, our VIX rally, our VIX sell off is not holding. So we'll see how that goes. But that's where you go. If you, uh, if you want to learn how to trade vol, become a position trader, become a condition trader. Come to optionpit.com. We are 12 years in and counting. There you go. Check them out, optionpit.com. And Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, where should folks go if they want to see all of your good goodies? Check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, or follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. If you're looking for a financial advisor who delves in the option product, if it's appropriate for the client. All right, and last but not least, Vince, we talked about live all, we talked about Tradler. I know you guys also have a cool newsletter people can sign up for now where they can actually get a lot of that data you guys are putting out on a daily basis for free. If folks want to check all that stuff out, where should they go? What should they do, sir? So you can go to trade, uh, trade-alert.com. Um, yeah, I'm, with this being Henry's typical slot, it'd be remiss not to mention Trade Alert. So, um, you know, if you want to get any of the cool data, um, take a trial. Um, you can just go to trade-alert.com. Um, and also liveall.com, which was the other platform that we're kind of referencing today as well. So um, 
episodes, uh, both uh, owned by SIBO and uh, great analytics platforms. There you go. Check them out, tradealert.com and livevol.com, or go to the mothership, SIBO.com, to learn more. That's it for us on the old OB today. Back again in a little bit with Twifo listeners. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. And then back again after that, exclusively for you cool cats and kittens. I see you folks there in the live chat talking about all the tornadoes that have been hitting us here in chi Yeah, I hope all you folks are doing well. I know a lot of you folks are in the Chicagoland area and are pros. Looks like you're all doing good, so I'm glad to hear that. Some crazy weather we've been having here, so hunker down. I say it every week at the end of every show, but I mean it quite literally, listeners. <laughs> Stay safe out there, and we'll see you back here on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>